So this was uh, this paper was intended to uh, be presented at the um, conference on, uh, at, on in March last March for research group called GERAS. I know I don't know if my colleagues from the uh, UK they, they know that group. Uh, you know the GERAS. Anyone? No. It's a it's a a research group on ESP, English for specific purposes. And it's, uh, yes, it's just to, to promote ESP in uh, academia. So, so obviously I'm, I'm just gonna cut the uh, theoretical bits of the, the paper. Um, that was the title, Bridging the Gap Between Specialized and Language Learning Through International and Online Collaboration. Because the, the um, topic of the conference was actually how to bridge the gap between the specialized learning, content le learning, and language learning. So I thought the CLIC project was a good example of that, and that's what I wanted to demonstrate. Okay. So, um, and Ed, if you feel, feel free to step in and just, you know, correct me if you, if you need to, okay, for it relates to our, our last, last year's project. So, um, so the project was um, so done uh, last year in March, April um, 2020. So right in the middle of lockdown in, in France and uh, also in uh, the, the States in Connecticut as well. So we were all um, online and uh, yeah, having to deal with Zoom for the first time, etc. So uh, we, we, dis uh, we the project consisting in pairing um, students um, uh, so from uh, the UK of so uh, our students were the, the French students were second year finance and accountancy majors and the uh, the American students were they were 17 and they were in, enrolled in a business program as well uh, as a, as a community college and the, the the project was to for teams of students to carry out a market Analysis on international banks. So I wanted to, I wanted to show uh, the, the, well, I wanted to argue that uh, the this this project um, offered new opportunities to to for inter interdisciplinary uh, collaborations, and I also wanted to highlight the challenges and the benefits of the program for both the students and teachers. Okay, that was the basic, basic uh, objectives of the paper. So um, the, the, I changed a little bit the outlines. I have different outlines, but I just, uh, I'm just going to go quickly through that. I'm not going to go into uh, lots of theoretical details, but I uh, just first I will uh, explain the objectives, the methodology, delivering the project, um, theoretical assessment. I'll cut a bit less because it's about language, ESP. Um, more about ESP, the role of digital tools, and the final assessment of the pro uh, project, basically the surveys, the results from the surveys that uh, we did at the end. So as I said, the project was to carry out an analysis of international banks that operate in, in France and uh, the US. So the students had to do a presentation banks, products and services, they had to study banks' attractiveness and dynamics. Uh, they had to do a SWOT analysis. I don't know if you, well, it's a business a strategy tool. You have to do the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for each banks. And also, they had to do a survey of bank customers' needs. Is that uh, Ed? You still feel free to add or step in if you like. Um, okay. So this was the, I just tried to formalize the methodology. So we st first, of, of course, the, the, the first step was finding a partner and we did the matchmaking through click, you know, in, uh, I can't remember, I think it was January or December. I think it was around that time last year. Then we designed the project's objectives, outcomes and plan. And then we presented the projects to the students and we did the pre-course survey that was designed by the Gazelle staff. Um, then we had to set up the international teams and we, we choose leaders. There was a, a, a leader on the um, 
for the American, um, and I, each team has two leaders, one American and one French. Then we assign the tasks. Uh, we was, after we assess the project and we delivered certificates of achievement and there was a post course survey, which was analyzed, etc. Okay, so that's the methodology. Uh, now, for delivering the project, as I said, it was like over about three months. Um, it was quite a short time frame. Okay, but uh, it's even this year, it's also the case. So <laughs> we don't know what to do about that. Um, so, it started in March, finished in May. Uh, so, the two institutions that we talked about, and so two teachers as well. And we had six teams of five to six students, three French, two, three Americans. And the project was divided into three phases. There was a, a startup and an ice-breaking phase, an intermediate task, and a final task, a capstone. Okay. Oops. Uh, can't. Oh, yeah. That's good. So this part I'll just skip because I I, I wasn't going to, to show how this project fit into current ESP pedagogy in terms of language learning because well we basically are showing that it centers it, it is centered uh, on the learner and it, and it enhances autonomy of the learner so that's what I was also it is based on learners' professional needs, because market analysis is an important aspect of running a business because it's used to define market strategies. And also the fact that the project was task-oriented and based on specific assignments. Also with communication. All of this, I go very quickly, that's, that's the current ESP pedagogy. Um, and finally, also, that's a new aspect is the project encourages what we call now computer mediated communication literacy, uh, which is the ability to initiate and sustain contact with distantly located others to accomplish a variety of international tasks, which is one of the four types of computer literacies, which is very important now. So, then I said uh, about te team teaching, I talked about different type of um, te team teaching uh, models from the, the one where you just look at the content of the specialized teaching when you're a language teacher and uh, the, 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 um, the more advanced model is like when you both two teachers teach this class at the same time. Okay, so. And for this project, we were situated a little bit in the middle because we, um, we didn't really teach the class, but we coached, we coached students. Uh, and we shared, uh, we worked together on the learning outcomes and as assessment protocols. Um, oops. Also, I mean, I wanted to say a few, a few words about the, the role of digital tools. And last year, I mean, as we know, we are all in lock, lockdown. So that's all we had to, to interact with, with students and for students to inter interact uh, with each other as well. So um, what I wanted to say is that um, we, we often assume that uh, students are very comfortable with the use of digital tools because they are the so-called Generation Z and they basically born with it. Um, but uh, however, research has shown that technology does not automatically facilitate learning. And um, in fact, we have to take into account the fact that digital tools they introduce another level of interaction in a language class or well, in any class, I guess, actually because the learner has to deal with both the machine and the teacher and learning content. So this has to be taken into account. And that's why uh, to address this, the prominence of digital tools, they, we made them part of the learning outcomes. And that is that students were asked to demonstrate a certain mastery of new technologies. And also when we designed the, um, uh, the plan, um, we, we started with simple interactive tools so that, you know, students wouldn't, wouldn't have any 
and biased in uh, the communication. So um, that was WhatsApp because French students are quite familiar with it, and but it's not very difficult to use. Um, the, and then we we also when we we use the the platform Google Classroom, which is uh, quite um, convenient to set assignments and communicate to students. And also for the final um, presentation, of course, we use Zoom, which we have to remember that last year that was quite, quite new um, to us. Um, okay, uh, and then I'll just finish with the last word on the, 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 the final assessment of the project, because we had the surveys, we have to, and, and especially the, the um, post school survey that I'd like to just show. We had, um, so we had 32 participants and we had 20 participants who answered the questions. So it's not all of them, they didn't all answer the questions, but we had a good uh, turnout. So um, all of them, almost all of them, we had a, a, a reported positive feelings about the experience. On the whole, American students recorded a very high level of satisfaction. Uh, French students uh, felt positive too, but with more variety in their answers. There was one student in particular who raved about the project, um, while there was another one who didn't really like it. So um, from this result, we can assume that students achieved some degree of inter intercultural competence which is defined as the ability to cooperate and comply with various points of view, developing relationships and maintaining them and appropriate and effective communication with little or no distortion. So some level, I might say, complete, uh, uh, but some steps towards that competence. Um, and also the positive perception indicate that students felt both in, internally and externally motivated. Of course, they had complete the assignment as part of the coursework, but they also wanted to be part of a speech community. And uh, just on the, the answers to the open-ended questions, about especially those about the rewards and challenges of the project were quite interesting. So the biggest reward for students was interaction and teamwork. And the French team leaders in particular felt empowered by their role in the completion of the task. Um, on the cognitive level, one American student claimed a better understanding of international banks, and, but French students didn't mention increasing this, their knowledge of, on, on banks. So that's on the cognitive level, we, but we didn't have very specific questions on that. So maybe we need uh, more specific questions to assess that, that aspect. Um, and for the American students, the main constraints seem to be the time zone, as Connecticut is six hours behind France, and they this made it hard for them to find slots to cooperate on the task. And for for the French students, the main barrier was communication, because um, they had various level of English language competence, so uh, sometimes it was a little difficult. Um, Okay, and I've just uh, just to, to finish. Uh, I just I was going to show and make some example because another way to assess the project is to look at the students' production. Um, and so I just want to show you quickly one of the, the PowerPoint the, from the final presentations of what was one of the best presentation. And after I conclude. Uh, so there was a uh, there was a there was a um, presentation on the bank chase the the GP Morgan, um, and so that's they did first they did the they presented the bank the reach this operating segment. Uh, no, that was a SWOT analysis. That was quite detailed. Some there was they were not all very detailed, but this one was very detailed. And what was uh, they had a, a survey with seventy respondents. Uh, was, uh, was 
quite good from uh, students from university or college from the United States or France. And they, they analyzed the, the result from this survey. So that was quite a good presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So just to conclude, um, just on the benefits and challenges of the project. So on, we can say that it meets learners' needs and interests. Uh, student can gain links between language skills and specific professional knowledge, and it increases students' motivation. It also develops uh, the students' communicative competence, and it also gives them international experience without traveling, which is it's going to be the new thing in France, in uh, uh, especially in the EUT, because uh, as we reorganize, we want to offer more uh, international experience to a lot of students. And but we can't because not all students can tra travel. I mean, it's expensive, and you know. So we this is a way of offering international experience without the travel. So and it develops cultural awareness. Um, so, in terms of collaboration between a language teacher and a discipline-specific teacher, we are, I think the language teacher can learn more about marketing and business, and meanwhile, the content teacher can also become more aware of foreign language use. Um, and and uh, finally, assessment, planning methods, and communicative approaches used by both teachers can provide a new pedagogical experience for both of them. So, yeah, uh, but challenge, the challenges, the cultural barriers, communication, uh, is the time zones, and also I mean, the project that requires a high level of planning and organization. I think Ed would agree that, you know, it's not, <laughs> you need to be quite involved. So uh, that's it. Um, I hope I wasn't too long. I tried to do it.